Okay. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Arul Shekhar from Nansai Restoration Pondicherry. Uh, we work on uh, providing sustainable solutions in the space of water, soil, and ecology. Uh, and uh, here today, uh, I have uh, overall an hour's time. And uh, uh, I'm going to share experience about uh, uh, our experience overall in the last 20 years on working uh, in uh, the field uh, of agriculture and farmers. So uh, the initial half of the presentation will focus on overall agriculture economics, how the whole you know situation is and, and all that. Uh, uh, how does it look? And uh, uh, then uh, towards the later part, we will get into um uh, what is the direction in which we as a nation india as a nation should progress forward uh, or what are the options we have and the and at the end yes the role of uh, small machineries how to uh, decide and to enable uh, the major uh, decision point of uh, uh, you know how this uh, small scale machineries would be very critical Okay, so I'll just go on. So the initial slide is a nice looking uh, typical uh, farm setup. Um, yeah, we always, you know, everyone, I think genetically or what, uh, uh, or how, uh, uh, due to our evolution, we always feel good that if we look at uh, green spaces, uh, uh, farming villages and all, be it to someone living in the city or, you know, uh, who's gone away to abroad for 20, 30 years also, he'll still still have that feel-good factor. And uh, can we really bring in that real feel-good factor uh, 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 in reality, uh, that is in the farm, in the farmers, in, with the villagers? So I just want to ask one simple question uh, before we get into the presentation. Uh, so uh, how... In the last 50 years, so much of development has happened, various technologies, AI, this, that. I mean, you name it, uh, we've developed. Uh, that's what everyone would claim. Um, uh, yeah, I just want to ask a simple question. How have we improved uh, our water, drinking water situation and the situation or the state of food that we eat from the point of view of uh, basic health so see we live we do various activities we are so developed we claim for what our basic needs as food water shelter and food and water how how much if if i have to uh, uh, accepting for you know the cleanliness that has improved drastically uh, 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 so uh, that's a question I start with. In the process of the presentation, we will get some an answers to it. Yeah. So overall, looking at farming landscape, uh, uh, fifty-two percent of India's landmass is arable, like uh, out of one fifty-five million out of three twenty-eight hectares. So fifty-one percentage of land is uh, rain-fed. Uh, and our annual food grain is 315 metric ton. So uh, one fundamental, everyone would say, okay, let's increase the productivity. Okay, I give it to them. Be it agriculture, universities, professors, great economists, okay, would say, okay, I uh, will have to increase it. Yes, we have to increase, no doubt. But what has happened to our water situation overall? Uh, the map on the uh, side shows completely depleted groundwater situation. So how far we can go on, uh, you know, like uh, just depleting, uh, in fact, bore wells have gone 1,000, 2,000 2, feet below ground. They are, uh, in fact, using uh, deep aquifers th that are uh, fossil water, which, you know, a few millennia before got stored. So how far can we go? And our use, deep bore wells also bring in uh, arsenic fluoride and various other contaminants from the deep uh, water and uh, the amount of uh, uh, fertilizers and pesticides that we use to sort of degrade the land. So, so if someone asks me how much of India's overall landmass or the soils that we are farming is really uh, viable, I would just say it's only 10%. I cannot, I, I mean, compared to 30 years and now, uh, overall our soil health 
uh, has drastically reduced. So, are we looking at that, uh, or do we want to only look at okay, production per per acre per per hectare right now and the next year, next year? Is that what uh, we as a civilization, we as a country, we as agriculture, uh, you know, uh, uh, ecosystem partners want uh, a single objective to be? So, take a simple example of a cotton uh, uh, about. Five percentage of total farm uh, uh, is got cultivated uh, with cotton, but fifty percentage of pesticides that are you know used in overall farming is for uh, for cotton farming. So uh, and what what is what is farming? What I mean, uh, see uh, to go back to the fundamentals. Uh, I have put in a name called ecosystem services at the last of the slide. So. Uh, if seed is grown, which other industry, which other uh, 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 production chain, you name it, uh, will give you so much. That is, if you just sow a seed, if the right conditions of moisture and nutrition is available, and you get in thousands, thousand x one seed you sow, and the grains you get are in thousands. So hundreds, thousands x of multiplication within a matter of few months, which that industry can give simply no other industry uh, so but what are we doing to the whole uh, uh, the ecosystem of uh, be it soil water situation and remember all that we so we get it back we use pesticide that's all water soluble it goes into the uh, ecosystem it goes into our ground table and tomorrow we get it in our own water to, that we drink so it's all coming back to us so uh, so, I mean, as simple as just non-pesticidal management for farming can reduce water demand by 30%. And so, uh, it can double soil moisture retention if we are, if we, uh, you know, retain the soil wealth and health. So, uh, soil and water, all this is, is it's both are really interconnected. We can't just separate out and look at, uh, okay, how much, this much production we need, okay, pump water this much, pump fertilizers this much. It doesn't work like that. So it's like, uh, uh, that's a foolish way to work. It's like when uh, when uh, nature can provide this as ecosystem services, we call it in ecology as, or farming as, because as part of ecosystem service, soil does it work, its work, rain and moisture does its work, and we get the yield. So do we want to reap without doing too much of work, or do we want to uh, keep working and getting less and less? So that's the fundamental question we have in, in front of us. And people have, uh, uh, it's not something new that I'm saying, it's it's known, but then no one is willing to act on it. Okay, so how does, what is, uh, okay, I'm talking about the large economics and soil and water, but where does machinery comes in? So I'm just quickly coming to the current situation of, okay, uh, where does a farmer stand? And a far you take a simple farming village, where does it stand? So, uh, and uh, in fact, the, uh, the, the challenges also, I'll come back to that slide after this farming challenges. So, first is, if, just if we simplify farming and see what are the challenges. Okay, nutrition supply. Either it has to come from the soil because soil is really healthy or you have to pump. That's the option we have. Reduce toxicity. So unless we reduce toxicity, the soil is not going to be wealthy, uh, healthy, and then it's not going to provide nutrition. You have to do the job that is already being done by the soil. Third, farm level, at, at village level, at, at panchayat level, uh, we are losing farmers. What do I mean by that? We are losing real farmers. We are losing the culture of farming. Um, so when uh, by real farmer, I mean one who uh, is a great researcher and a great entrepreneur. Any farmer, any good farmer has to be an entrepreneur. And nowadays people call, okay, entrepreneurship, the thing, thing okay, uh, uh, seed funding, this, that, all kinds of things. But remember, thousands of years, we had the best of entrepreneurs and best of uh, researchers as farmers. Because they work under the most... Uh, instable or uh, conditions like 
they are dependent on rain they are dependent on various fluctuations so they may manage all this no other entrepreneurial activity is as tough as or as farming so these three challenges new nutrition supply reduced toxicity uh, and uh, uh, and loss of farmers the, these are the basic three challenges that i see and in the ecosystem so farm create price so what is the price of a simple coconut that i sold from my farm 20 years before and now so same 10 rupees then what do i do 20 years before i was getting the same and now i am getting the same what does that mean then the next uh, the ecosystem changes uh, from 30 years down the line and now we've uh, there is a labor shortage the sheer physical ability of humans have come down health conditions because of various things there you can call it uh, fast food habits or whatever it is even at villages we, we are seeing people who are not really healthy and non favorable policies from government yeah government has its own uh, uh, constraints its own priorities you call it vote bank priority uh, you call it uh, prioritizing the consumer uh, than the producer so at the end whatever happens in the ecosystem farmers are the receiving end so yeah this is the overall sort of an ecosystem ecosystem thing that farmer as such cannot help uh, but the ecosystem the policy uh, state the government everyone has to act upon so uh, coming back to uh, i'll quickly uh, the i just again and again reinforcing on soil because soil is fundamental you can call okay i don't need soil i'll uh, do aquaponics hydroponics all that funda but then if you want to do a transition what just cal- uh, what, what do you think is the uh, is a transition cost of transition to uh, shift from soil farming to uh, uh, hydroponics or whatever you call it like uh, 50% of you know our indian population is dependent on farming soil based farming and you are saying one day because you did some mba and uh, whatever education okay farm, uh, i we can do uh, without soil i mean it does doesn't make any sense so uh, do you just do your mba calculations properly and say what is the cost of this change management transition and then you will go bonkers okay so i'm i'm just now uh, going back to the why small machinery yeah i'm i'm uh, talking little non uh, i mean may not be uh, talking the things that uh, any agriculture economics economist would like to hear but uh, uh, at the same time uh, we are at a, uh, at a junction where uh, uh, as a culture as a country as a nation as as a power world power how do we move forward uh, so one option is okay yeah we uh, one uh, the state clear status we are uh, where uh, machines are defeating humans because of this uh, uh, earlier said Uh, uh but simply because as a farmer i have a labor shortage i have issues of paying farmers more so why is it happening why is it happening because farming itself as a profession is not being so much of profitable so i quickly go back to the uh, then so how can small machinery help here so uh, in, uh, here we have to look at two uh, options that we have this is a major flux point i would say in uh, the agri- agriculture ecosystem of the country either we continue to follow the western model of large machinery or we have the option of choosing a different paradigm of uh, farming altogether though it's, uh, in 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 the market in the reality it's 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 all happening in a chaotic way but where do we want to go where does the, our governments our our public policy uh, has to focus on and has to uh, has to uh, enable so there is an option of small machinery where capex will be small uh, so even small farmers not only the village panchayat heads or big landlords can buy large machineries and rent it out for, uh, for other small farmers and uh, uh, you know uh, take the major portion of the profits from the small farmers in because 
they also have put in a lot of capital they've got uh, you know 40 50 lakhs of machinery uh, they have to uh, also become prof profitable i'm not saying something on uh, some someone as uh, as someone trying to uh, 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 get someone else by throw but what is the sort of ecosystem do we want so the small machinery has a great advantage of uh, creating local manufacturing rural jobs and machineries need not be uh, made in large uh, uh, factories it can be uh, locally made uh, and these small machineries uh, as simple as weeding uh, if weeding uh, because of labor shortage if if i me as a farmer if i'm going to go for uh, weed aside and make my life simple but if i have a simpler option of small machinery of doing dvd then i they, i have an option not to go for a weed aside or you know so as a farmer so how is the small machinery going to help uh, enable this the alternate uh, i wouldn't call it alternate it's, it's the mainstream uh, uh, indian model of you know farming i would put it that way uh, and make non toxic food available to consumers at the same time uh, small machineries can also add uh, to value addition of farm produce and increase farm rate price and critically the just one single point farm grade price this is the one single point uh, uh, we have to note down how good our uh, farming ecosystem is in enabling the farmers now going into so okay if we have to make farming resilient there are the just uh, six point agenda okay make your water sustainable so there is no point simply then uh, pumping from 2000 feet and draining our uh, uh, power uh, see 2000 feet instead of 2000 feet if you pump from 30 40 feet uh, just imagine the amount of power saving that will happen the the environmental cost so uh, uh, and uh, yes water and next to the soil these two are the most critical thing uh, for uh, you know getting any produce out and enabler will be the small machinery quality seeds and is obviously the market where farm grade price has to improve for the farmer to do anything at all so do we want our farmers to feel pride like a few hundred years before where we were uh, uh, we felt every farmer felt self worth and pride in and every youth wanted to do farming so do we want to get to that state or uh, uh, we are going to uh, uh, look at farming even now uh, as simple as in a in a simple village marriage market uh, the farmers are looked down if you have a shoddy job in some small town uh, just for some 10000 15000 uh, salary you are looked upon uh, better so why why as a culture we've lost this pride so it's a, it's a it's an important thing we have to get back to this uh, and what is the way this one community two ground water three uh, village overall uh, rural uh, ecosystem four soil so these are the four components that we have to focus on uh, uh, as far as okay you, you can ask me okay fine uh, uh, but you are saying all this how do we do see as simple as especially in in southern uh, india Uh, a few hundred years before or 800 to 1000 years before uh, all kings from chola to everyone have you know done great work on water management and yes obviously in rajasthan and uh, you know uh, north also elsewhere there have been great systems in place as simple as reviving these traditional systems like there are some small village ponds ensure uh, that the water is channelized and the infrastructure is uh, uh, right Uh, to get water to this as simple as reviving can you know make uh, uh, a great uh, change yes now there are various technologies that are available which also has to be harnessed from satellite based uh, technologies to ground water mapping technologies to enable uh, uh, in a very positive direction and ecosystem so the critical juncture where we are is uh, do we want to follow simple western model of uh uh not looking at soil uh, as a great wealth and looking at it as a simple dirt where a medium to grow plants 
and keep feeding in fertilizers and pesticides which the companies give uh, or do we have the decentralized model of uh, which has been uh, you know promoted in india as a cultural farming practice yes i completely agree right now the state we are in uh, it is really uh, non viable to do the indian way of farming decentralized way of uh, farming some economics would say uh, um, uh, amalgamation of small farms and uh, hundreds of the thousands of acres a single unit of farming will be only viable uh, like in the europe and uh, uh, american western kind of a situations but do we do you want to give into that theory simply without doing anything on the ground where we have this vast knowledge where we have this vast human resource engineering it uh, 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 satellite data systems ai you call it we have it here so do we want to utilize or do you just simply blindly want to follow some people saying uh, which way we have to move forward as a nation as an ecosystem as a society so i i'm just giving you some case studies where uh, uh, our bs nansai were involved and my uh, acquaintance other uh, uh, people have also been doing so uh, we have been greatly working on water restoration uh, using the latest technologies i uh, i'm not saying we should not uh, develop technologies we should not use uh, machineries all i'm saying is what is really appropriate uh what is the vision what is the what is the vision of uh, overall activity so do you want to work in alignment with uh, uh, ecosystem or do you want to uh, uh, go against and uh, fight all over so that's the choice we have do you want to make uh, soil and make uh, uh, plants work for you or do you want to run behind them and keep working you know for for getting even a pittance of yield so this is one uh, example of where uh, uh, we we uh, enabled a, a technology based water restoration uh, using ground water mapping and the satellite data uh, this is another example of uh, intelligent farmer system where uh, uh, our objective has been to reduce overall non pesticidal uh, or pesticide usage and increase non pesticidal farming by early detection using the latest technologies available so there is also emerging value chain with automation like uh, the ecosystem is changing the value chain could change uh, uh, as a simple labor seed water uh, equipment farm equipment kind of a system to uh, automation data analytics satellite data drone based data and uh, robotics so yes we may have to adopt it but we have to be very clear with what is the overall vision and approach in uh, the way forward so we can't simply blindly follow the western model of okay 1000 few thousand acres is one unit because that's not our scenario our uh, land holdings are small our systems are different our ecosystem is different and even the un report uh, various reports have clearly said as a long term uh, water sustainability and and uh, humanity has to survive one critical factor is small farmers has to survive so that the local is ecosystems thrive and ecosystem services enable humanity to live so uh, just small machinery there are so many innovations happening just in in india this is once uh, i'm just taking few examples we've been part of few uh, so this is one uh, uh, simple example of a uh, 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 a small mini weeder designed uh, uh, you know in, with with a model of a bike so this is one sukoon electric who are coming out with small machinery uh, solar dryers uh, this is a groundnut thrasher we worked on and we enabled uh, uh, at a farm level uh, or a small scale uh, processing of groundnut and we uh, we have also involved in uh, 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 paddy and uh, and major crops uh, being sugarcane uh, mini equipments and so uh, so another uh, way this small equipments is not only uh, great or helpful in farming activity as such 
it can also be greatly enhanced value addition. So one example uh, I'm just giving you because I was uh, closely associated with this about uh, from the last 10 years, a small scale machinery was developed uh, for spinning yarn at farm level uh, or at a village level. So uh, it could sort of bring in uh, artisans, farmers, everyone together. And uh, uh, in fact, the technology was awarded and it enabled a lot of small businesses uh, to get garment, farm to fabric, farm to ga uh, garments at a village level itself. Though, so thereby, as simple as uh, a farmer sells cotton uh, at 50 rupees per kg uh, as a lint, same if he converts into that same one kg can, can be used to produce about three shirts. And uh, if one shirt is going to cost you even 1,000, 2,000 bucks, then it, there is like from 40, 50 rupees, he's going to uh, earn 4,000, 5,000. That's like 100 times more. So all that, uh, the power of value addition uh, uh, at the rural is great and small machineries can really enable this. If uh, uh, to put up a large spinning mill or any processing unit in a large scale, a few, few crores are needed. And uh, it's just not, uh, you know, possible uh, by small entrepreneurs. These are wonderful fabrics created in Andhra and Rajasthan and uh, Maharashtra, Vidarbha regions uh, using uh, just local labor. So it's, uh, so it's like, uh, so the bottom line I want to again and again stress is uh, we have to get back to our cultural roots and, and uh, uh, take a step in the right direction towards uh, uh, using, adapting and creating technologies that will enable our ancient wisdoms, uh, uh, wisdom. And that's the vision we have to take, vision and approach of ensuring that ecosystem thrives, the soil thrives, farmers thrive, and uh, we as consumers uh, uh, and farmers we eat good food and our humanity and uh, thrives. So I'll leave it there and I leave the floor open to questions. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks for the opportunity. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Seiko, for the detailed presentation. Now I'll take up some questions. Yes. So the first question is, how do economies of scale impact agricultural production? Yes, that's, uh, um, in fact, I should have added a slide on that. That's a very good question. So um, uh, economies of scale, uh, if you look at just one uh, simple uh, uh, a crop, say uh, a rain, rain fed crop, so you have an investment of, uh, uh, say, uh, about for an acre, 30,000 rupees, any just, I'm, I'm uh, talking in general, be it uh, sesame, any such uh, crop. So you have to invest about 30,000 and your returns will be about 4,000, 5,000. Okay. So uh, if you take little more cash crops, example could be groundnut or uh, uh, other crops. So investment per acre would be, uh, say about fifty to sixty thousand, and you will reap back about uh, say ten to fifteen thousand. Uh, so there are way, way, lot of vary vari variables. Uh, what is the price in every day? Uh, unless farmer uh, uh, harvests and goes to the market and gets that money, the price is not assured. Okay. So keeping all that uncertainties, uncertainties aside, I'm just coming to this number. So for a farmer, for from one acre. Uh, the return is only about 5,000. Okay. Uh, for a rain fed crop, I'm, I'm talking in, uh, in a, uh, on an average. So for a cash crop, it would be 10 to 10 to 15,000. And if it's a, a well fed area, if uh, water is good, then if he goes for better crash crop, then it could be a little more. So uh, already there is almost pittance. Okay. So, uh, 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 and uh, if we are going to say, okay, only large uh, machineries has to come. If large machineries has to come, then there is a price to it. 
uh, per acre doing anything with large machinery, the value chain, uh, the whole value chain has to be paid. That is, the large machinery would have been invested by uh, an entrepreneur investing a few crores. Okay. And so he has to take that interest and pay everything. So all, where will all that come from? It has to come from that 5,000 of the farm. Okay. Yeah. So again, it will be eroded. If on the other hand, you give an option, the government comes out with a policy to also enable this small machinery. Yeah, you, next question would be, okay, I don't have that kind of a small machinery right now. Uh, it is we as uh, the ecosystem and as uh, uh, the uh, influences of small uh, the government policy have to sustain this so that even that erosion of that 5,000 doesn't do, go beyond uh, or further. And on the other hand, this is one economics, uh, this is one economics, okay? The other side is, can we do anything else to increase the farm gate price? Again, I'm going back to that. If we increase farm gate price, then a lot of issues will be uh, addressed. So uh, as government policy, so it's, it's the, again, you're saying, uh, so I'm going to policy and all. Uh, even you uh, look at Europe or uh, American model. Have they uh, have the are the farmers there profitable with hundreds and thousands acres of uh, uh, amalgamated uh, uh, farms? No. If Europe and US stops their subsidy to farmers, they will just uh, be eradicated. So uh, so. Just don't be in the illusion that uh, the large uh, scale technologies and these things uh, will make farmers viable. But we have to think through, we have to be the best uh, uh, farmers, engineers, and uh, the decision makers here have to put our best efforts uh, to create a model that will work for us. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question is, what are the key factors influencing the profitability of small-scale farming? Uh, come again, madam. What are the key factors influencing the profitability of small-scale farming? Okay. So, one is a short, short term. Okay. Uh, uh, another is at a medium term and a long term. Okay. So, uh, uh, sh short term could be uh, one... Uh, uh, the farmers as a uh, small so um, uh, producer organizations okay farmer producer organizations is one way forward where these small machineries can be sort of procured and rented out within within that small group uh, so that this cost uh, 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 they don't pay out an extra cost uh, using a large machinery, which is not needed anyway for a few acres of a land uh, land holding. Okay, uh, there are other practical issues. For example, uh, 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 that has to be managed as a small group. Like for example, everyone want to do the plowing at the same time. Okay, it is rain today, tomorrow, so all that has to be there. So that small group has to sort of uh, plan that too. Uh, second is uh, uh, again I'm coming back to this key critical word. Uh, farm uh, gate price. So, um, yes, one is uh, through uh, government is providing for some of the crops uh, uh, minimum support price. So, uh, um, uh, some uh, may argue, you no, know, no, farmers have to be independent and uh, they have to, you know, act as per market forces and uh, all these jargons will come. But what market forces are you talking about? When your when the government policy cuts down exports, when the price of farm producers go up to suit uh, their urban vote back, then uh, what uh, uh, justice system and what uh, moral you have in trying to tell uh, that uh, farmers should not be given MSP, okay? So you just simply don't have any uh, moral right. Because 
when you are controlling the exports you are controlling the price of farm produce when you are doing that when the ec economics economics is designed such that it's just copied you know from various places yes a lot of great economics are here but then uh, uh, still it is a work in progress and we shouldn't fall into the trap of uh, you know following the western model that's what i'm coming back to again and one do the farm gate price so we have to have the uh, increased in farm gate price one one uh, good thing could be as simple as increasing uh, or in, including uh, millets and other easily grown uh, with minimal resources crops into public distribution system so the procure, procurement can increase i think recently uh, other governments it was initially started uh, uh, by uh, uh some of the governments in south and now there are other governments in uh, in in uh, uh, elsewhere in the country also adopting this so uh, you ask me about three things so i am saying uh, the third thing would be the soil uh, uh, leave out the short term you, you go to a mid term and a long term soil is critical we are losing soil like anything like we are losing our vision uh, the kids uh, losing losing our health so soil is something very critical and i gave you this number 90% of soils that we are already doing farming is not a viable good healthy soil so unless we reverse this we are not going to go anywhere uh, we only have to follow if we don't reverse that we have to we will be left with no choice to follow whatever uh, models people are dictating from elsewhere okay so three things one uh, 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 a small machinery and uh, uh, so to ensure uh, the profit doesn't erode from a farmer to uh, um, the uh, uh, overall economics of it uh, the farm grade price should increase three soil these are the three critical factors i would say thanks yeah next okay and next question how does agriculture mechanization contribute to increased productivity uh come again madam how does how, how does agricultural me mechanization contribute to increased productivity okay so uh, productivity uh, there are uh, we can again uh, put it into three slabs okay so one uh, uh, mechanization can also aid soil health as i was mentioning once okay if we reduce the usage of pesticides and uh, 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 overall uh, uh, fertilizers uh, it could aid especially the pesticides the toxic items toxic elements that uh, is determinant to the health soil health and soil microbial ecosystem so if uh, soil uh, uh, health is retained by using small machinery that's one way to uh, in the processing uh, and i give it to you all people who are uh, 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 vouching for automation and uh, various things yes i think we will not have any other option uh, though 10 years before if you had asked me this question yes we have so much of labor how where will the job people go for jobs but now the situations are changing we have to uh, uh, adopt to other small machinery so that the overall uh, uh, farming cost is reduced that's two third is post production uh, that is after harvesting post harvest there is considerable loss there is so many numbers coming up like 30% loss 40% loss so reduce that loss so these three are important critical uh, uh, areas where adoption of machinery will drastically increase productivity okay thanks yeah and <clears throat> what are the advantages of using small scale agro machines in farming operations okay so i think it's a uh, uh, my answer would uh, be a repeat of it so uh, advantage is one uh, advantage i see is immediate uh, if wherever there is labor issue Uh, wherever the cost of labor is high they will they will uh, if adoption will directly benefit second uh, it will also mitigate use of uh, pesticide and other uh, especially the the herbicides uh, weed con weed sites weed control so uh, if if machineries uh, are rightly adopted 
we can reduce which will retain soil health which will again you know bring in uh, uh, more productivity uh, so these are the two critical things uh, i would again say and uh, the previous response is also a reply for this and yeah and mm. uh, in fact uh, the small uh, missionary ecosystem uh, has to be i'm just taking a few minutes uh, yeah, over here sure. if we have time uh, as a society as a, a design community as government have to really bring in this focus of uh, uh, a design culture where uh, uh, the small machinery uh, can be manufactured in rural areas what is the major issue one critical issue in overall that we as a nation face is rural jobs okay if you look at uh, i mean including farming and various other things so uh, even 5 years before or uh, the statistics was uh, 1 million people are moving out of villages okay so uh, how far will you keep uh, uh, creating more industries and more uh, uh, stuffing the towns and cities in trying to accommodate them the may, the critical thing would be to create rural jobs and uh, if the machinery farm machinery industry can be re looked at reinvented uh, with the help of uh, economists with the help, help of uh, the design it and uh, the power uh, of uh, uh, entrepreneurs and uh, the government policies um, uh, there is a possibility to come out with a design culture where uh, open source designs are made okay so uh, there is nothing stopping from government to uh, even uh, get in the best of minds best of companies uh pay them get designs out of it with our interoperable okay so these designs are open source which the rural farmers uh, or rural entrepreneurs uh, uh they are innovative small workshops and uh, people and uh, these companies can also sort of make uh, uh, those components some of the not easily manufacturable rural components available for easy purchase and uh, it can be sort of uh, machineries can be manufactured lo locally to the needs okay this is one different paradigm shift that i am i'm suggesting but even if we attempt there and we end up having a large ecosystem of companies that are providing uh, small machineries at a reasonable cost to say financially also it can be reengineered so uh, saas model pay as as you use model so various things are possible but uh, uh, it is uh, it's simply a l lack of little more of creativity and uh, minds getting together and right policies helping this yes ma'am to you okay and uh, what what role does small scale agro machines play in reducing labor intensity on farms okay so um, from uh, as simple as paddy sowing to uh, um, dividing to spraying to uh, 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 harvesting uh, to post harvest management uh, so everywhere already there is uh, in the last 5 years we are seeing a drastic change just in last 5 years there are more and more companies getting into it and in the last one or two year two years we are also seeing a number of people number of other companies getting into uh, 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 farm automation come uh, 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 data analytics helping uh, farmers so these also has has to be tailored for small small farmers for the small farmers to take advantage of okay and one uh, route that we already have is a farmer producer organizations which can enable all this uh, 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 there are uh, so many thousands of farmer producer organizations but in the the design ecosystem 
and the uh, the small machinery ecosystem is not uh, there yet so i think the government uh, has to act so uh, why i am saying again and again government is there is a lot of things possible with the kind of uh, policies that uh, you know as simple as government by deciding what to import and what to export uh, can simply decide uh, what uh, the farmers are going to uh, get in their pocket for the produce that they have worked on for the last 3 months 6 months 1 year so that much power the government has so uh, uh, can uh, uh, at least a portion uh, about 70000 uh, uh, crores is uh, is the i think is the budget or you know it would have gone to 80 or close to 1 lakh crores is the fertilizer budget okay that government is uh, spending uh, or giving to uh, uh, fertilizer companies. So can even a small percentage of that uh, diverted into this small farm machinery, then this will enable a different kind of an ecosystem in farming. These possibilities exist. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And... How do how can small scale farmers access and afford modern agricultural equipment? Yes, uh, it is a very uh, important yeah. question. Already, uh, 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 many small farmers are uh, in a great cash flow trap, where for their sowing next to sowing they have to get a, 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 a interested loan in, loan with interest. Uh, you know, uh, you know. So if, when that's the situation, uh, when if I'm going to ask, okay, you you guys, uh, you know, buy more machinery, spend more, invest more, and buy more machinery. So asking more uh, from uh, farmers would be uh, not a great thing to do. So that's where again I'm saying uh, uh, producer organizations, governments, uh, other people, design ecosystem can really pitch in to enable this. That's a major blocker. Uh, 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 that has to be enabled. Okay. And <clears throat> yeah, so what are the economic benefits of integrating technology into small scale agriculture? Yes. So, see, uh, again and again, I would uh, stress technology is wow. Okay. Technologies are great. But uh, for what are we going to use the technologies? Like I started the, the whole discussion today with a simple question of, uh, can you assure me that the water you're drinking today is much better than what uh, water people were, were drinking 50 years before? Just keep out the cleanliness part, okay? Uh, uh, that has drastically in, in, increased. Uh, like the amount of pesticides, the amount of uh, uh, toxic chemicals that we use in cities and towns, uh, any water body is polluted, any groundwater source, any groundwater source, remember, is polluted. So, uh, uh, at the same time, uh, the food we eat has considerable toxicity. Just that no one is bothered about it or no one uh, uh, can think, no one think that they can do anything about it, they don't test it or they don't talk about it. So, with all this technology, what have we done to uh, uh, the last uh, 50 years of a simple as basic needs is water and food. So do we want to do the same thing for the farming ecosystem uh, in the next 10, 20 years to come? Because that's going to be decide, that's going to be a, dis a deciding factor. So either, uh, either we take a, uh, as a culture, as a country, we take a strong uh, position or we follow what has been happening uh, in the Western countries. So uh, this is very clear uh, clearly coming out that uh, we have to act now and uh, every uh, uh, stakeholder has to put in from government to farmers to design uh, designers to economics to uh, MBAs everyone everyone have to put their hands in to enable this and uh, to coming back to the question uh, uh, to make technology workable for small farmers at an economic scale uh, and show unless see uh, there are so many technologies coming in now also but then uh, 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 farmers will not easily accept if it is not uh, simply viable for them even as simple as any farmer you go ask uh, it, it is not like they will be happy putting in pesticides 
they know that you know uh, they can't uh, feed the same food uh, for their kids and in fact a number of small uh, number of farmers i am i'm seeing across uh, uh, especially in south india who are growing small plots just a few cents for their own house usage but what they sell so uh, they say if i you know do everything uh, uh, with as non toxic then i'll uh, just simply not survive so yeah okay yeah and uh, how do small scale agro machines contribute to sustainable farming practices yes so so i i already emphasized but i'll just repeat because this is very uh, thanks to uh, whoever had asked this question uh, uh, so from important as as important as reduction in pesticide and weedicide herbicide usage uh, which is the first major killer of the local ecosystem and sustainability when the local ecosystem as simple as uh, you would have heard uh, honey bees has become half extinct in number of developed countries so and here also in india also it's happening the the 30 years before when you walk into a field the amount of small insects and the diversity of insects that you see in any farm field is no more here which is a clear indication of an ecological health uh, the current state so which will mean that your pollinators Uh, 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 that will directly depend on the crop uh, productivity. But we are losing our pollinators badly, very badly. So uh, there, there is a uh, current situation in some of pa some parts where people have to do manually pollinating. So this is madness, you know. Some I mean insects were doing its job; it was doing pollin pollination by itself, and. Uh, 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 it, to sort of eradicate uh, uh, most of them and say i'll ma i'll go do uh, pollination manually uh, doesn't it look like madness uh, i can't use any other better word and we are also going through uh, insect apocalypse where a large portion of insects are getting eradicated right here in in, in all uh, uh, across india so so small machineries can play a great role in making farming more sustainable and at the same time ensure so it's not only going to affect uh, people farmers it's going to affect everyone everyone is a consumer if anyone cannot live you know without food so every consumer will be better off every farmer will be better off overall humanity country and the civilization will be better off uh, if we move to a more sustainable uh, uh, farming practices and one of the enabler being the small machineries yeah. thanks thanks for the question again yeah okay um two more questions what are the challenges faced by small scale farmers in adopting modern agricultural technologies uh, yes uh, the first question uh, uh, was okay scale of economic so the technologies that are coming out right now be it uh, uh, farm advisory technology uh, be it uh, uh, other you call it uh, uh, be it drones be it uh, usage of satellite data so all that uh, is uh, more still uh, models business models are only viable for little larger farms so it has to uh, uh, that uh, uh, that transition has to happen uh, so that it is accessible for a small farmer also it's like uh, last mile connectivity we will have this issue all over be it uh, electricity we were, uh, i think uh, till few years before uh, we were not i mean uh, only 90% electrified rural areas did not have electricity so you know it took so many years so be it atms uh, rural uh, rural atms connectivity mobile last mile connectivity everywhere we had this issue of trying to get that services in fact uh, dr abdul kalam had come out with this uh, 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 urban amenities in rural areas that has his vision uh, 2020 and all that so so similarly these technologies we used uh, satellite based drone based uh, uh, analytics computing and uh, 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 and advisory 
So can it be offered for a small farmer also? And the innovative business models has to come for it. One is a SaaS model, uh, soft, I mean, SaaS is basically a software as a service, where uh, uh, many and you know, one of our Indian companies is pioneering this model world over, where you pay for your use. So similarly, uh, th uh, there has to be farming models that, you know, uh, 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 where uh, the, these technologies are offered at as per use model so that it's not, you know, major uh, cost for the farmer. Yes, thanks. Okay. Uh, last question. How can government support, sorry, how can government support the adopt, adoption of small scale agro machines among farmers? Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, uh, one, uh, there has to be an innovation. I, I'm getting into a little more specifics. We have been, uh, one, there has to be an innovation center uh, or a, a, a government could promote uh, rural innovations by setting up uh, an innovation center, farm innovation center in every block. Okay. Where, uh, 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 I was mentioning about uh, the open source designs. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, one uh, Mr. Kannan, a good friend of mine, uh, 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 we had uh, uh, a long discussion on this, how to enable this. And I'm just uh, sharing some of the inputs from those discussions. So uh, uh, can there be compatible designs? Okay, so uh, the farming operations are, are majorly rotary operation, cutting operation, or thrashing operation. So, like this, uh, so can the overall government facilitate innovation centers, bring in these uh, uh, entrepreneurs and innovators, design enthusiasts, uh, uh, and uh, so many people living, uh, you know, uh, who who moved out of village, who have the knowledge. We have we are great of human resource capital. So bring in them and come out with open designs to enable this, this uh, uh, small missionaries culture. This is one uh, this thing. Then yes, as a standard, uh, uh, as an easily doable, see a lot of easy things are, uh, easily doable things are there. Just offer a scheme where uh, uh, FPO or a small farmer can avail 30% uh, subsidy, 50% subsidy for a small missionary. So those are easy doable things which most governments do, but they, they don't do anything beyond. That's the problem. Okay. So we have to think beyond and go further one more step and enable this ecosystem. And the government uh, is the right machinery to do it. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Arula, I don't see any more questions yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks, thanks. from the participants. Okay. So now we have come to end of question round. On behalf of agricultureinformation.com, we'd like to thank you for the detailed presentation and answering all the questions in depth. And we also like to thank all the participants for joining this meeting. The meeting will now be closed. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thanks most welcome. Thank you. Thanks.